AMD's RDNA architecture is coming to a close. Version 4, as seen in the current RX 9060 and 9070 series GPUs, may well be the final form before the expected 2026 release of UDNA. This iteration promises improvements across the board in both rasterization and ray tracing, and in terms of price to performance, it's holding up well against the competition from Nvidia and Intel. But how does AMD compare against AMD? If you want to fairly compare RDNA 4 to RDNA 3, you ideally need GPUs with the same number of shaders. At the top end, this doesn't work. The RX 9070 has 3584 shaders, and the XT has 4096. Looking back at the history books, you could possibly compare these two against the Vega 56 and 64 from the tail end of the GCN architecture but nothing in the history of RDNA quite lines up. Thankfully, the RX 9060 XT is a perfect match for several GPUs in the RDNA back catalogue. The RX 7600 XT has the same core configuration as the new model, with the RDNA 4 card boasting improvements to clock speeds and cache, as well as a node shrink from 6 nanometers to 4. This makes it possible to see exactly how much RDNA 4 improves over RDNA 3 and, indirectly, over versions 1 and 2 as well. The RX 6650 XT, 6600 XT and the OEM exclusive RX 5600 are also a match in terms of number of shaders, so it's technically possible to directly compare all four generations of RDNA just from those cards. Unfortunately, they have less VRAM than the newer models, and in the case of the 5600, it also lacks ray tracing. I actually considered doing a full comparison of all four cards, but my time with the 9060 XT was limited, the RX 5600 has proven hard to get hold of, and the RX 6000 series is practically identical to the 7000 series in terms of performance per clock. Even with that in mind, coming up with tests that can fairly compare cards varying from 6 to 16 gigabytes and from 1.5 to over 3 gigahertz, all without bringing in ray tracing, just seemed kind of pointless. So I settled on only comparing these two. Maybe I'll change my mind if there's enough demand for it. The RX 7600 XT was kindly provided for this video by Scan Computers. I always say that companies like Scan kindly provide review samples, because I'm grateful for all the free stuff even when it's just a loan, but in this case it really was kind of them. The 7600 XT is basically end of life at this point. They sent me one of the only models left, incidentally a Gigabyte Gaming OC, and there's no benefit to them in promoting it. Which is just as well, because this isn't really a buyer's guide. If you have a 7600 XT already, or can get a great deal on a used one, this may be of some use to you, but on the whole, if you're in the market for something in this price range, you should probably buy a 16GB 9060 XT. From Scan Computer! For the purposes of this test, the RDNA 4 card needed to be dropped from its usual clock speed of around 3.3GHz to the 2.7GHz mark of the 7600 XT, which isn't as easy as you would think. It's a pain in the ass trying to get any modern Radeon card to a specific clock speed. It will always try to boost up higher if it can, so I used the AMD software to drop the target clock speed to negative 500 MHz, the maximum underclock allowed by the software, and drop the power target to minus 30% to try and stop it boosting all the time. As a result, I was close. It frequently clocked in at around 2.7 to 2.8 GHz, on par with what the 7600 XT clocked itself at, but could occasionally go as high as 2.9. The difference in architectures is going to vary across games, and one of the smaller deltas is found in Assassin's Creed Shadows. The RDNA 4 card averaged 65 FPS at 1080p and 51 FPS at 1440p, while the previous gen GPU only hit 52 and 40 FPS respectively. This equates to an improvement of 25%, and remember, this is one of the smaller differences. 
how big can a gen on gen improvement get? Try Doom the Dark Ages, whereby RDNA 4 sees a 58% higher average FPS at 1080p and 66% at 1440p. I know VRAM amount can have a significant impact on performance in this engine, but both of these are 16GB cards. The real benefit is coming from RDNA 4's improved ray tracing performance, which, given id Tech 8's reliance on hardware RT, is seemingly doing a lot of heavy lifting here. Back at the lower end of the scale, Claire Obscure Expedition 33 sees a 26 to 27% boost in performance from RDNA 3 to RDNA 4. This one is an Unreal Engine 5 title, and I have a couple more in the test lineup, so it'll be interesting to see how consistent they are. The Stellar Blade demo is a UE4 title, so the numbers are a little higher than other games on this list. That shouldn't make a difference to the percentage, which in this case is just over 30% at both 1080p and 1440. Which is a similar story to Alan Wake 2. Despite being made on the Northlight engine and producing significantly lower frame rates overall, the margins are once more around 30%. My default configuration in Black Myth Wukong skips full hardware path tracing, but still uses Lumen, and therefore that improved RT performance comes into play again. This new arch sees 37 to 38% increases over the old one. Another RT heavy id tech title, and another huge improvement. Indiana Jones gains 38% at 1080p and 43% at 1440p. Dragon Age Veilguard is a little less impressed by RDNA 4, but still benefits by 27% at 1080p and 30% at 1440p. Cyberpunk actually benefits a little less than some of the newer games tested, at least in rasterization, only gaining 25% from the new architecture at 1080p and 30% at 1440. Back to the upper end of the scale, Spider-Man 2 really likes RDNA 4. The average climbs by over 50% at 1080p and over 45% at 1440. It's a similar story in God of War Ragnarok, whereby the difference is 55% and 47% at the respective resolutions. And again, in Horizon Forbidden West, 1080p improves by 46% and 1440p by 50%. The Last of Us Part 2 is a bit more tolerant of the older arch, with RDNA 4 only benefiting by 28% at 1080 and 32% at 1440. Kingdom Come 2 also comes in at the low end of the scale, averaging 27 and 33% improvement respectively. The last title in the test is another UE5 one. Like Claire Obscure, Stalker 2 sees a 25 to 30% delta from old architecture to new, and unlike Black Myth Wukong, which is perhaps leaning more heavily on the RT hardware. On the subject of RT, I also went back and retested the two GPUs with some more advanced ray tracing settings enabled to really hammer home just how big of an improvement RDNA 4 is over its predecessor. Starting with AMD's Achilles heel, turning on path tracing in Indiana Jones sees the RDNA 3 card only capable of single digit frames. Even the best card of this generation can barely give a 1080p 30fps experience at these settings, so there's plenty of room for improvement. The RDNA 4 card delivers over 100% higher frame rates at 1080p and 130% higher at 1440p. Unfortunately, this still equates to some unplayable FPS on the RX 9060 XT, but it's at least a step in the right direction. 
Again, turning on PT in Alan Wake 2, the improvement is proportionally huge, a night and day difference. But practically speaking, it's more like night and later that night. Once again, BMW's path tracing benefits hugely from the new arch, but you still don't want to turn it on, unless you really like FSR upscaling. Cyberpunk also has a path tracing mode, and unlike the others, it's actually borderline playable on AMD GPUs, within limits. This game is still one of the poster children for the technology, so I could see some people actually making use of the overdrive mode on a 9070 XT, maybe with Optiscaler to inject some FSR for goodness. Ultra RT, meanwhile, isn't quite as transformative as path tracing, but it also plays like a dream by comparison. Even RDNA 3 could handle it, although RDNA 4 still gains massively, benefiting by 66 to 70%. I think it's happened already, folks. We found a game where 16 gigabytes of VRAM isn't enough. Well, okay, Spider-Man 2 is an optimization nightmare on most hardware, but enabling Ultimate RT really hurts frame pacing, and underclocking the 9060 XT rips the already low percentile scores to shreds. I think this VRAM limitation is holding back the RDNA 4 card at 1440, hence the smaller benefit over RDNA 3 when compared to 1080p. Turning up the settings to Epic in Stalker 2 is evidently not putting any greater degree of pressure on the RT hardware than it was at high, because while the absolute numbers are lower, the relative ones are about the same. Veilguard also remains about 30% better on RDNA 4 than RDNA 3, which is on par with its rasterized performance, and there's also a few percent difference between the raster and RT results in AC Shadows. The overall picture then sees an improvement of around 40% in rasterized rendering and lighter RT workloads, with heavier ray tracing gaining 45-55% to from generation to generation, and path tracing specifically more than doubling in performance compared to RDNA 3. In terms of power consumption, you can't really separate the two cards at stock settings, which is kind of to be expected. As I said before, Radeon GPUs boost as high as they can with the power and cooling available to them, so the power savings from the more efficient 4 nanometer process are instead turned into higher clock speeds. Throttling the RDNA 4 card back to more closely match the older model does also reduce power consumption however, and that means it's actually only pulling around 125 to 130 watts under load. This reduced power draw far outweighs the resulting performance loss when underclocking, so the efficiency difference between RDNA 3 and 4 is actually around 100%. Turn on ray tracing and that figure climbs to 130%. In a generation where Nvidia has seen no real IPC improvement in RT or non-RT rendering, I'm glad AMD were able to extract this big of an improvement out of RDNA for what might be its final iteration. I kinda wish we'd had this performance for RDNA 3, given how otherwise disappointing that generation was, and how it left Nvidia to dominate ray tracing in the PC space. Unfortunately, we still have to ask more of AMD. Despite that massive gain, we still need UDNA to deliver double the path tracing performance to match where NVIDIA is right now. If NVIDIA have been saving their big gains for the next generation, which is what I suspect may be the case, double may not be enough. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.